Do you ever find yourself talking to Trump voters? Sure, now. And how does that conversation go? <laughs> well, some of them are not that healthy, but also, <laughs> but, you know, you, I, I got a call not too long ago from some people saying, would I come to West Virginia? Because now all of the people in West Virginia are saying, we voted for this guy. We didn't think he was going to take our health care. But then, I, you know, I, I, I went to the U.S. steel workers, and there were some persons there that voted. But I talked to them and helped them to see. You know, my grandmother used to say, if you scratch a liar, you find a thief. Well, if you scratch a racist, you find a liar. You can't trust Trump on the economy and on labor and working people because he started his campaign being racist. Is, Don, is Donald Trump a racist? His policies. See, see, this is what, again, about racism. has nothing to do with you never said the N-word. It has nothing to do with you raised the Klan flag. The way you did look at systemic racism is what will your policies do? So, for instance, if you're against the living wage, right, and there are 64 million people in this country without a living wage, then that means you're against working poor people. But if you also know that 54% of those persons are black, 54% of black people make less than a living wage, then you're promoting a policy to deal with systemic racism. If you want to roll back the Affordable Care Act, not talk about universal health care, which is where we really should be. That's the issue. You want to roll back the Affordable Care Act. Now, you're going to take health care from 20 million people, but you're also going to take health care from 3 to 4 or 5 million black people. Even though the majority of the people that are being helped, for instance, by Medicaid expansion happen to be white, the states that have refused to expand uh, uh, Medicaid are states where six out of 10 black people live. If you lie about voter fraud, and you know it's a lie, and you use code words like urban, <laughs> right, and you say nothing about voter suppression, which is proven in the court as being racially driven, then your policies say who you are. In court, that's why I love going to court. The courts just said that our legislature is racist and the governor is racist. They never used the N-word. But the courts looked at what they passed and saw disparate impact, which is a, which is a way in which you prove racism. You can, you can be the nicest, sweetest, handshakingest person in the world. <laughs> you know, you can invite people into your tower. But if the policies you you you, you, you pass, tear down equal protection under the law. They said, we're not doing this because of racism. So one of our lawyers said, well, then why did you call the, the, the Board of Election and ask the Board of Election how many African Americans use same-day registration? And why did you ask them who uses the first week of same-day, of early voting the most? And when they told you that the first week of early voting was used mostly by black people, you ended the first week of early voting. If you know history, you understand that what we've seen with Donald Trump is as American as apple pie. It's the call and response of history. The call is more justice, more racial progress. The response is racial, ra uh, the progress of racism, the fear and the reaction. And what should surprise us is not so much that Donald Trump used these tactics but that he and others, Ryan McConnell and others, have been so successful at using them in the 21st century. And one of the reasons I've been writing about the Third Reconstruction is because I think too often too many people do not know this history. 